Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. So today is another one of the editions where I am going to be uh, doing a solo recording, and I'm going to be explaining what I call the energy matrix and energy management, uh, personal energy management, as opposed to, for example, time management. For those of you on the video, I'm going to now switch over to my fountain pen drawings. Here we have our title slide, right? Our energy matrix and management. And as usual, I am going to draw a two by two matrix. So that's where we have a horizontal and a vertical axis, right? Okay, so we have a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. And when we are talking about task strategies, whatever, on our uh, vertical axis, we are going to look at our competence for a task or for a set of skills. And then on the horizontal axis, we are going to look at our energy. Okay. So whenever we have, say, for example, low energy, or actually here, let's fill out the matrix. So we have low and high energy, and then we have low and high competence, right? And whenever we have a situation where we have low energy and low competence, that's usually where we're kind of depressed, Generally speaking, this is not the kind of zone that's amazing to be in. And most of us don't like being there. And I'm going to fill out the matrix first, but then we're going to talk about what the implications are because they're actually pretty profound. So the next quadrant that we look to is where we have high competence, low energy. This is what we call the excellence zone. This is where you do, you do something that you're not really enthused about it, but this is where you have, where you're not enthused about it, but you're really good at it. On the other hand, we have a situation where we're highly enthusiastic, highly energetic about something, but we're not very competent. This is what I call the anger zone because it's a, the situation where we're trying to, we're working really hard on something and we are trying to, you know, but it's, you know, we're not very good at it. So it's very easy to fall into becoming angry. And then in the upper right, this is where we have the genius zone. And the genius zone is of course, where you have high competence and high energy. And as a leader or you know, basically person who is looking to be exceptional, you want to identify your genius zone, and then you want to carve out the non-genius zone tasks. As far as the things to, to carve out, right, the easiest one is going to be depressed, right? Because these are going to th be things that you're not very enthusiastic about and you're not very good at. This is easy to get rid of. The two that are hardest to get rid of are if you have high enthusiasm, enthusiasm but low competence, or low enthusiasm and high competence. Here's the reason why. When you're talking about the excellence zone, this is something where you're really good at, good at it, but it's not what you want to do. And this will lead to burnout. And so I think if there is one thing to take from today, it is that you need to figure out where is your excellence zone. And these are the most important things to find somebody else to do. Because if you put too much of your time where you are excellent, but not in your genius zone, you will get things done, but you will not be happy and you will eventually burn yourself out. And I think the, the, the other zone, what I call the anger zone, is this is a little less, this is not quite as insidious because what will happen in the anger zone is you will be, be sub par versus your potential. And the reason why this is insidious is because when we are doing something that we really enjoy, but we're not very competent at, I mean, it's theoretically possible you can get that up into the genius zone by building competence. But otherwise, you will be burning time that could be spent in your genius zone based on something that you like but aren't very good at. And so the thing that we all really need to do as both peoples, leaders, et cetera, is we need to, you know, uh, let me go on to a new sheet of paper here, is step one, figure out your genius zone. You know, you need to figure out where is your genius zone at. And then step two is you need to find people who have a genius zone that is in your excellence or anger zone. And so I'm going to write that out onto the paper here. Have a genius zone in your anger zone or excellent zone. And then step three is you need to 
you need to offload tasks or scope to these people. And so if you do this regularly, what's going to happen, and I'm going to do the old two axis chart, two axis graph chart here, is that you know the effectiveness of your time as you start doing this, right? Every time that you do this, you'll go up another ascension curve and then you'll plateau, but you'll this is how you get that bottom left to upper right productivity curve is by concentrating more and more and more and more of your time in your own personal genius zone. And I think this is the thing that is really important to master if you are going to become exceptional, if you're going to be exceptionally compensated or anything like that. And because here's another way to think about it, because you know, a lot of people have heard about the one number idea. Okay. And so people say, all right, well, what's that one number? What is the value per hour for your time. And that seems pretty simple. Let's say, for example, that the value per hour for your time is $250. Maybe lower, maybe higher, but for the sake of this conversation, uh, let's just say it's $250 an hour. Well, the practical implication of that is that anything in your business with a value under $250 an hour should be outsourced. That is either to another company or another person. Now, the problem is actually doing it. The conversations that I have had with people who have put this into action is that it will and does change your life, but it takes a lot of, I guess you would say, guts or, or ambition or chutzpah in order, to, you know, in order to implement something like this, because you will need to spend money that you may not have yet earned in order to free up your own time to get into the genius zone. However, the only way that you can push your time to the genius zone and keep it there is if you are willing to follow the one number philosophy. Right there you have it. You have the energy matrix, you have energy management, and how to basically get the most out of your personal and business life that you possibly can. Uh, so anyway, I would really appreciate if you would uh, subscribe, if you would leave a comment, and then, you know, if you would tell your friends about this channel, so hit the subscribe button, uh, make sure to go and uh, you know, just go and leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And then, and then go ahead and share because, you know, that will help me to create more content for you to help everybody you know, ascend their business and life to world-class. Uh, so anyway, that's enough for today. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will talk to you later soon. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Please feel free to visit me online at www.terminalvalue.biz where you can subscribe, find me on social, and then we can connect and just keep the conversation going. I'm really looking forward to hearing from you and I hope you have a wonderful day. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Light, LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.